and welcome to another episode of Beyond NSU. I'm your host, Kalisha Jamison, and on this episode, we are joined by Desiree Christie, a 2016 graduate of Norfolk State University. She majored in psychology, and after graduating, she enlisted in the United States Army. Thank you so much, Desiree, for being here with us today. How do you feel? I'm feeling right. I'm feeling right. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I'm happy to be here. So thank you so much for having me. No problem. <laughs> so you graduated in 2016. What is it like coming back to NSU today, looking at campus, seeing everything? How does it make you feel? Honestly, coming on campus, I was in like a bit of a total shock um, because it looks absolutely nothing like what it was back when I originally started in 2012, let alone when I graduated in 2016. And so it was an initial shock. Mm. Um, but then ultimately, of course, like I'm proud to see like what it is that it's grown to be. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be back. OK, so take me back to your mindset. What made you choose Norfolk State? to choose to get your degree here? Yeah, so um, I come from a family of Spartans. Um, I have some relatives in my family that graduated back in the 90s and the 80s. And so um, Norfolk State was ultimately like that, that first look at college. It is that myself and my siblings that we had. And so when looking at the decision to actually come here, um, mm. of course, funding goes into things. Um, the, the atmosphere, the environment, um, the, the structure, and the actual department it is that I was looking at, which was mm. psychology. And so when you put all that together, behold. Yes, <laughs> and I think that's pretty cool that everyone in your family, they have that, that connection. You guys are all alumni. Yes. So why did you choose to choose psychology as your degree? I'm yes. I'm going to make you choose, I um, So psychology was something that it initially gave me like that, that structure of how is it that you're going to help people with whatever it is that they're going through? Mm. And so um, prior to coming to NSU, I was a strong mental health advocate anyways. Okay. And so when I look at it is what it is that I'm interested in and my actual passion, it made sense for me to come here and just major in psychology. Wow. And so you mentioned mental health. How is that very important, you know, as a black woman, as a young student, being here away from home, how important is mental health and to stay on board while in school and chasing your degree? Listen, I tell people all the time, like mental health is your most important health. And mm -hmm. so once you take care of your mental, everything else will fall in line is what I believe. And so it was um, and still is a very intricate part in what it is that I do, um, how I live and how I move. And so when coming here, um, the structure and the environment as far as me being an issue, it became a therapeutic environment mm -hmm. for me. And so it just continues to make sense. Uh, mental health is, again, your most important health. Right. And what are some things that you did? Like, was it like reading? Was it like just taking a break or? what was some things that for helped? sure um so i grew up in a church okay. and so when i came here to university some weekends i wasn't necessarily able to make it back home okay. to my home church and so as a student here um i just walked across the street to gethsemane mm -hmm. i attended some of those church services um, i utilized the resources the mental health resources on campus and then i also became a member of active minds and active minds wow. was an organization that was here to serve the community and the norfolk state students faculty and staff that really gave you the correct stigma mm -hmm. or remove the negative st stigma behind mental health. And so I became a member of that. They gave additional resources. Um, and then, you know, I just continue to do what I do, which is mental health advocacy. That's amazing. So after you graduated in 2016, 2017, you enlisted in the United States Army. Tell me what made you decide to do that and like what were your duties while for sure. Um, yes, 2017 came and went. Um, <laughs> I listened to the service um, August of 2017. And honestly, initially, it was a thing to where I needed a backup plan um, because post-grad depression became a real mm. serious thing. And I want to say like my plan A and B definitely did not like come through how I wanted or how I envisioned. And so I listened to the Army. Um, I enlisted as a unit supply logistics specialist, which enabled me to, I shouldn't say enabled, which prompted me to um, budget within $1.3 million Ooh, worth of wow. equipment. Uh, you know, I was in charge of just make, making sure the Army had exactly what it is that they needed from a range of different supplies, whether it was for aviation, uh, maintenance, uh, different just types of battalions and whatnot. And so, yeah, this is year five for me. Oh, my oh. goodness. Yeah, year five. <laughs> so as you look back at all the opportunities in your journey, how is in an issue very helpful or what mark does they leave on you? Like whether it was elements or relationships mm -hmm. that you encountered while you you know, go on. Mm -hmm. The number one thing, and that's an amazing question. 
One thing I tell people often is that I'm so grateful for the psychology department because it really gave me that foundation of do you really have what it takes to really genuinely care for somebody at a mental state stability? So that was one thing that Norfolk State was able to grant me. But on the flip side, NSU gave me that grit. I absolutely don't settle. I love when people tell me no. I love the whole the, um, the hold up and wait and they never mm -hmm. get back to you. Like NSU really gave me that grit. I don't give up. My favorite word is no. I just love it. So shout out to NSU. They gave me that grit uh, because of them. I don't give up easy. Okay. Um, I know exactly what it is and what it takes for me to just keep going. And then I also like to keep people uplifted as well. And so. You know, wow. each one, teach one, reach yes, one. <laughs> I love that. So you had this amazing opportunity with working with the Brooklyn Knights, which is your favorite basketball team. Talk yes. to me about how that <laughs> opportunity came up and what will you be doing like as you work with their organization? Absolutely. So I am a current MBA student at mm. the Graves School of Business at Morgan State University in Baltimore. Okay. And so um, I, my current concentration is HR. And I really have a passion for diversity and inclusion, okay. uh, sustaining and everything else it is that comes to just creating that family oriented diverse environment and mm. so when it came to that uh tmcf which is thurgood marshall college fund they they're doing um they're doing collaborations with hbcu students across the world and so okay. their partnership their most recent partnership is with the nba and so i went for the opportunity um i am so grateful for it the Brooklyn Nets, they said, hey, uh, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for someone who has a specialization within HR, someone who is looking for like that, that opportunity just to get their career just up and going. So I went wow. for it, I interviewed with the Brooklyn Nets and here I am. And so I will be interning with the Brooklyn Nets this summer as a diversity and inclusion intern. That is so, so exciting. I know you're Thank so you. happy about <laughs> that. Um, yes. What advice would you give students, upcoming students that are looking to probably go into that same career path as you, what advice would you give them? Absolutely. Um, I would give them a couple of things. Um, the first thing is you cannot give up. Keep going. The no's don't stop the show. The I'll get back to you's don't stop the show. You ultimately you make that decision and so once a person see you giving up on yourself mm -hmm. everything else is is done and so my first thing is i would tell people just to not give up just to keep going my second thing is to really focus and really look into your why why mm -hmm. is it that you want to do that a lot of people don't look into what you're doing they look into why you're doing what you're doing and so once you really conquer that you look into your why everything else will continue to take off wow I love that. I love that. So what you're very young and I know that you have so much more that you want to accomplish so much more that you want to do. Yeah. So what are some of your long term goals? What are some things that you plan to do? How do you plan on leaving your mark on this world? Listen, because the, the world is, is, is a, mm -hmm. it's a piece of work, but we're needed. Genuine mm -hmm. people, impactful people are needed. And so um, in the upcoming years, um, my goals and my aspiration includes me becoming the chief of diversity and inclusion for a Fortune mm. 500 company and or sports team that's one I would love to continue to give back to my HBCUs create mm -hmm. a scholarship fund for you know upcoming students um, or uh, rising upcoming students that will wow. be um, just coming here and so those include two things um, what else I again I would like to create a, uh, a building an organization that will really aid to the veterans mental health um, as a veteran myself who also is very compassionate and passionate about mental health, that's something that is near and dear to my heart. And so those are a couple of things that I, I plan on working on and just continuously giving back. Wow, that sounds like a lot on your plate, but I know that you're <laughs> just great with that. <laughs> so you. don't count the days, make the days count. That's a yes. quote that you live by. That's a quote Absolutely. that you always are saying out loud. What does that exactly mean for you? Yes, um, <laughs> don't count the days, make the days count. It's something that I came across a couple years ago, and it's something that's near and dear to my heart. And what I mean by that is we got seven days in a week. And we all know that ultimately, like, you know, we all look towards that Saturday. And so they don't necessarily pay attention to what you're doing on that Sunday through Friday. Yes, that Saturday means everything, but ultimately I still need to know, how did you grind Sunday out? How did you grind Monday out? How did you grind Tuesday out? Don't allow what Saturday is, you know, supposed to be bringing to just kind of just like distract you from what it is that you still, you still have work to do mm -hmm. Sunday through Friday. And so that's what I mean by that. And I absolutely love that quote. 
Uh, yeah, that's very touching to me. So looking back, did you think that you will be here where you are now, like just coming in as a freshman at Norfolk State, going to Morgan State? Did you think that you will be in this position where you were? Absolutely not. Um, born and raised in Portsmouth, Virginia. That's just a city that we don't necessarily make it out of. Um, and so I truly thank God for it is what I, where I am today. And it wasn't for God, uh, my family, my friends, my foundation, of course, my HPC. I don't think I would have come this far. And so, no, it does. It, this looks like absolutely nothing of what I've been through. So I'm just grateful. I'm so happy to have you, and I'm so happy you came. <laughs> I wish you so much of the best, and I know that you're going to do so, so well on many of your journeys. And I'm so glad you had the opportunity to talk with me today. That's thank all the time we have now on this episode of Beyond NSU. I would like to thank you again, Desiree Christie, for joining me today, and I would like to thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, Kalisha Jameson, and until next time, remember, behold the green and gold.